Getting features out faster sometimes requires sacrificing project organization. Further enhancements to your project start to slow you down, and changing behavior gets harder and harder. Rust lets you split a package into multiple crates and into multiple modules. My name is Ricky and this is The Dev Method. By managing a project in Rust, we're going to take a look at packages, crates, and modules. So far, we've written things only in the main.rs file. For very large projects, Cargo has workspaces. Those are covered in chapter 14 of the Rust programming book, so you can take a look there if you want to skip ahead. In this video, we're just going to cover the basics. Packages is a feature of Cargo for building, testing, and sharing crates. Crates are a tree of modules that produces a library or executables. Modules and use let you control organization, scope, and privacy paths. Paths are a way of naming your items. They could be structs, functions, or modules, along with other Rust stuff. So a crate is either a library or an executable. The crate root is the source file that Rust needs to know where to start your module. And a package is at least one or more crates. Package in whole has a cargo.toml file. In my example here, we have the package, as you can see listed here, and then the name of that package, our version, our addition of Rust to be using, and then its list of dependencies. So I happen to have here a main.rs file, and that keys us in that this is a binary that we're creating. If it's a lib.rs file, that means it's a library. And you can have multiple binaries in the source slash bin folder. So all of our source code will be actually scoped under crate, and this will be our crate. So for example, when we had the uh, guessing game and the pitfall game, we had a dependency called rand. This is so that we could use uh, the range struct, so rng. So if we wanted to use it in our source code, this is what it would look like. So we had rand under the dependencies, and then we used this double colon to get to this rng struct. So with this example, never, never mind the uh, squigglies underneath things that's just saying that the code isn't used yet. So the Rust programming book actually uses a restaurant as a way to like model different modules and scope. So we're going to use that here in our example. So I want to call your attention to line number five because we have here front of house. And within front, so front of house is a module that's uh, no, notated with MOD for module. And then we have mod hosting. So we have a module within a module. So that's cool. We could do that. And then we also have functions. Now, the function could also be outside. It doesn't have to be nested in double modules like this. And it could also be um, not inside a module at all. But for our examples going forward, this is going to be the structure we start with. Now, we use the modules not just for organization, but to control our privacy. So we have either public or we have private. Public means that anybody who's using this crate in the future is going to be able to access that function or that struct or that item that you want to grab. So now that we have our module structure here, I want to show you uh, just in a more visual way of structuring this. So we have the crate, which is just the overall thing that we're making. And then we have front of house here. But then we have hosting that's underneath it. And then underneath that is the wait to, uh, add to wait list. Then we have seat at table. Now, besides hosting, we also have serving, which has take order, serve order, and take payment. So you can see very similar to like a uh, file and folder structure on your computer, uh, this is what the modules are doing. So now let's take a look at this example. Um, notice here we're uh, in this function called eat at restaurant on line 13, and we want to uh, take an absolute path or we want to take a relative path to hosting. And the way we're going to do that here is we use crate, which goes to the very root of our crate. Um, and it's an absolute path starting from the very first lib.rs file. And then we uh, either follow uh, a, a directory structure and file structure, or in this case, we're following the module structure. So in order to get to uh, this first error, which is saying that hosting is marked as private, uh, the way we can alleviate that issue is we just mark it with pub. So it'd be pub mod hosting. Now, we do have another issue after this. Then there's the add to wait list. So we can actually mark functions with pub, and that makes it public as well. So now we've actually fixed both of those paths, the absolute path and the relative path. So here's another way to do a path. Um, it's super. This is another type of relative path. Um, but it actually looks at the, uh, the next module up until it gets to the crate. And that's why we can get to um, serve order here. So this is the. Uh, 
above module and then serve order. Just goes up one level. So we can also make structs and enums public as well with the pub. So here's pub struct breakfast on line 10. Um, now all of its fields are actually private by default. So if we want to expose those, we have to put pub in front of the field. So like toast is public, but seasonal fruit is not. We'll get back to that in a second. Let me just go down a little bit further here and just show you that um, we're going to use back of house. So we got that scoping, right? That relative scoping to right here, back of house. And then uh, breakfast, right? Because breakfast is marked as pub. Now we want here uh, summer, which actually actually happens to be an associated uh, method, or it looks like just a uh, associated function here. So we have um, an implementation for breakfast. And so on line 16, there's summer, and it takes in a string, and then it returns a breakfast. And we actually need this right now, otherwise there would be no way to create a breakfast. So this is kind of like our constructor. So we have toast here, which we're just passing down from uh, the function call. But instead of like the lowercase uh, string slice, we're actually just using the whole capital S string struct. And then we have uh, seasonal fruit. So now even though the user of this code wouldn't see seasonal fruit, it's still being initialized. So everything works as expected and we can compile our application. Now, so in contrast, if we marked an enum as public, not all of its variants are, are private by default. Um, if we mark an uh, enum as public, then all of its variants are actually public. And if you think about this, you can think like, if I'm ever going to write a match statement, I need to know all the cases in order to handle it correctly in my application. So that's why, by default, if you mark an enum as pub or public, all of its variants will also be public too. So here's an example here in line 17, where I have the soup variant and then the salad variant. I'm using that in eat restaurant. And I can use those because pub, the enum, is already marked as public. Um, so appetizer has soup and salad. And if I added more, they're automatically public. So let's go back to absolute paths and relative paths real quick. Uh, notice here with uh, crate, this absolute path will work because hosting is public. Now what we're doing here is um, we're pulling it into scope so that we could just use hosting. That way we don't have to do like crate, front of house, hosting, and then add to waitlist. We can just use hosting on its own and then add to waitlist. So now I've wrapped everything in a module called Ricky. And uh, I'm using a relative path here just to show you the, the contrast here. So self front of house is saying, okay, whatever module I'm currently in, then go to here, this front of house there. And if I was to uncomment the one with crate, because remember crate goes to the root, so that would go outside of module, uh, uh, Ricky. Um, that one's not working anymore. So it's uh, pretty common if you're gonna use something like uh, collections from the standard library here. Um, I have an example. Line 12 shows uh, use um, standard std colon colon collections colon colon hash map. And that way we can just use hash map here in our main function. So here we're bringing in the full path to this hash map. Typically you want to bring in the full path and uh, go from there. But here's an example of when you maybe wouldn't want to do that. So here I have function one and function two, which are not implemented. So that's why we have to do in here. This will just simply uh, call a panic when we're running the function, but we're not going to do that right now. But I just want to show you here um, uh, the result that we you might have seen in some of the other videos so far. Um, that there uh, is different in the format uh, module versus the I/O module of the standard library. So if we look at std colon colon fmt on line twelve. Uh, that's where we get this result here. But notice they're both the same name, and they might even have a different uh, way of constructing them or using them. But we typically, like, I guess if you wanted to do this, you, you could also do this. Um, you could have them separate, bring in two things from STD, and then use them like this. Now, another thing you could do when pulling something in the scope is you can use this as keyword. So on line 13, uh, instead of just bringing in result, we're actually like making an alias, like a type alias to results, and we're calling it IO result. So this is actually something you can do as well. So let's talk about re-exporting crates. So let's talk about re-exporting names with pub use. 
So notice here, line 18, we have pub use, and then it says crate, front of house, and then hosting. So then this way, if somebody goes to our crate, they can go straight to hosting. Now the key here is that uh, front of house was actually private before, but hosting was not. So this way we've made a way for uh, people using this crate to get to hosting, even though it's contained within a private module. So real quick, back in our cargo.toml file, I'm going to put uh, rand in here, just like how we are going to uh, specify any dependency, not just the rand. So by putting it in here, just as a review, uh, it means when you go to cargo run or cargo build or cargo check, it's going to pull down that dependency and uh, get it into your code. And again, as review, just wanted to show you here, um, this is how we bring it into scope. And then this is us using it. Just review. So now this is in contrast with something like uh, the standard library when we pulled in that hash map a moment ago, because the standard library actually comes with Rust. So here's an example of using the standard library on line 14. Uh, but notice we have to use STD twice. So there's another way we can go about this. So now take a look on line 17. We can actually do this. Uh, but there it is. So we can actually pull out just parts of it. That way we don't have multiple uh, things from the standard library or any of these other crates or packages that you're going to use um, and have to write the use statement multiple times and multiple lines. So here's another example. We, um, we want to bring in something like IO, just the whole thing. But then we also want just IO write. So we could actually write it like this. Um, we want to bring in IO so we can actually just do self. So you put it in these wing braces, right? And then you separate them with commas and a space. And then we also bring in write. So both the same thing. Now, if you really just want to bring in everything, that's where you use this glob operator, which is just the asterisk or the star. Um, and that's saying bring in everything under collections. So here now I have opened two files, and I want to show you how we uh, are using and pulling into scope different parts of your package through multiple files. So here we have uh, mod front house, right? And then we're wanting to export it, uh, the hosting module from that. So here it is. Now, notice uh, front of house is actually um, within the source folder under front of house.rs. So we no longer have like that module written out as source code, but it's just a file. It's just a Rust file. But here we are having uh, a public module hosting. So let's take it a step further. Let's say we want um, hosting here. All right. So now we're gonna. So now we're gonna take this public function out of here. And we're going to make front of house a directory. And then we'll put hosting.rs inside that directory. stuff's a little tricky, so I would suggest going to the Rust programming book website and reading through it, especially that last part here, about separating modules into different files. It's going to be really helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, have a good one.